They came into this game, West Ham having lost three matches in a row. Was this complacency? Is Frank right? Did Chelsea just think they could just swan in and win this? No, not at all. I don't, I don't agree with that. Listen, if you, if, you, if you think you have to go away from home and score three goals to get a point, then clearly the problem is defensively. And that's not something new. I know I've been talking about it. As good as, as they are going forward, and they could have scored three or four goals today. And if you're scoring three or four goals away from home, you're not doing too badly. But at the back, you know, Mikel Antonio, as big a heart and as, as big a, a f physical presence as he is, he doesn't have the touch to go along with those other things that he has. And what, what you do against a guy like him is you use your football brain. And we saw today that Rudiger and Christensen do not have a football brain. They did everything to make it easy for him. They gave him space so that he could pick the ball up short. They didn't get tight enough when they had to for balls over the, over the top. And then they got too tight in the times when they shouldn't be. You know, a big physical guy like him, he wants you to be really tight so he knows where you are. You've got to use your brains. And I have to say... As good as Frank has been so far, him and Jody Morris as coaches with, with going forward, I think you saw a weakness in them today because this is really easily sorted. All you have to do is one of two things. You either make sure that Kante sits in front of Antonio and screens him, and if he's not there, then one of the centre-back screens him and the other one goes in behind. It's called one in front, one behind. That means... The only ball that's beating you is a big long ball away over the back and you should be able to deal with that. I think that's down to the coaches because they never saw it and they never changed it. Stevie, if it's that obvious to well, you, why isn't it obvious to them? Well, because teams don't do that. You know, I, I hear people talking all the time about, oh, the game's moved on. Well, I tell you what, the game may have moved on in certain areas, but it's also gone backwards in others. And that's one of them. You know, teams don't know how to defend properly anymore. You know, uh, listen, I joined, I joined the European champions and it was the first thing I learned. Defending when, defending when you're going forward is just as important. When you have the ball, it's important that you defend properly. And that was the first thing I learned. The two centre-backs, either one in front, one behind, or they pull the full-back, or they pull somebody in front to stop a ball just getting knocked out. And then all of a sudden, teams are getting at you. Shaka, when Pulisic went down and they won the penalty and Chelsea scored, I don't think there were many Hammers fans who thought, you know what, from what we've seen over recent weeks, they're going to rally, they're going to come back, they're going to win this by three goals to two. But fair play to your old side. Yeah, I, I thought they did very well, especially after having the, the well, what should have been the opening goal disallowed as it was. And then Pulisic, who was easily Chelsea's best player, um, running at... at, at uh, not Igbona, uh, Diop as he did and, and draw the foul. Um, I, listen, I, I, I thought that, that, that the game was over right then. But it, it was good for Suchek to, to respond as he, as he did just before the break. And then in, in the second half, this was about West Ham playing to their strengths. And, and, and listen, I, I, I find today a strange day to be criticising Mikel Antonio. First of all, West Ham are a totally different proposition defensively with Igbona on the park than not. And you saw that. They looked confident and comfortable defensively. And the only real threat came from the runs coming from deep of, of, of Pulisic, who, who I just mentioned. And then that opened up a mighty old gap um, for, for Rudiger and Christensen to defend against Mikel Antonio, who I thought was incredible. Held the ball up well, waited for runners, and was just too much of a handful for, for Rudiger, as good a player as, as he is. And West Ham took their chances right when they came. And Yarmolenko came in. And again, you see that gap in between their, their two centre-backs and their midfield as they press looking for, looking for winners and just left them exposed. West Ham, I thought, got the just rewards and, and not a day to criticise anybody in Clariton Blue. Frank, do you agree with Stevie? Was Frank Lampard somewhat exposed today tactically? Uh, I agree with Stevie on that. What I agree with Stevie is that he thinks that uh, because you have three or four chances to score away from home, you did pretty well. I mean, and after he makes a, a big lies, lies about, uh, about the fact that Chelsea didn't defend well, where I think away from home, that's the first 
things that you have to do, defend well. Can you imagine that you are at the 90th minute and you concede a goal in contract attack when you play away from home? Even if you think that you, you can win, you have to make sure that you're enough defensively. And I think about Marcos Alonso, uh, uh, when the, the action is on the right side, where, why is he doing, where is he going, why is he not going back to defend and go, go, come back to, to, to late? I don't understand why those players don't think about defending when they are defenders. And that's why I'm, I am, I'm upset. I totally agree with TV the way they defended uh, Christensen and, uh, and Rudiger on Antonio. That was absolutely insane. I mean, I always talk to Steve Clark or Marcel Desai or, or, or Michael Dubery. Okay, when you have a guy, a strong guy like that, you go in front, I go at the back, I cover you, we squeeze him to make sure that he doesn't control the ball because it's going to be too easy for him to do so. I don't understand why Frank Lampard didn't adjust that because that was ridiculous the way they defended. On the third goal, I mean, that's crazy because Rüdiger, I don't know what he's doing. He's like 20 yards away from, uh, uh, from his partner mm. and let Jagonenko uh, going uh, uh, anywhere and score a goal. So, yeah, I'm, I'm upset because I think it's not the way I was taught to, to defend away from home. Uh, two other things uh, from this game. The first, a positive once again for Chelsea. It has to be Pulisic. Once again, an argument that he was their best player, Stevie. I, I don't think it's in question. Um, you know, he, he got the penalty. He got the free kick for the two goals he did get. He actually got himself, he ghosted into a little spot right in the edge of the penalty area in the first half where I thought he actually probably at least should have hit the target. Uh, and he was lively. So, yeah, he, was, he really was a threat uh, for Chelsea today, no question. He was their main, their main forward, no, no doubt about that. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.